Starts right now. Emergency ending. The COVID-19 public health emergency set to expire in days. What that means for all of us moving forward. It's been something that's brought us together. And so now we're all torn apart. He was a beloved pet in one San Antonio neighborhood, but now he has a new home. Why this peacock was relocated and why some of those neighbors say he should be brought back. But first. Governor Greg Abbott making moves ahead of the end of Title 42 this week. The governor's office tweeting these photos out earlier today. Those are images of more razor wire barriers being installed at the border near El Paso. The state is preparing for an expected influx of migrants. Right now, those seeking asylum can be turned away under Title 42, specifically to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. But that expires on Thursday night, along with a federal public health emergency. Cities along the border are already seeing an impact from the end of the policy. The night team's John Paul Barajas joins us now. John Paul, you spoke to the mayor of Del Rio today. What is the situation down there? That's right, Tim. Mayor Alvaro Arriola tells us there's about 1,000 migrants just across the border in Ciudad Acuña, all waiting in anticipation of Title 42 being lifted. Tonight, the mayor says, quote, we're prepared the best we can be, end quote. Mayor Arriola explains Del Rio is opening some city-owned buildings for processing and housing that allow the city to take in around 4,000 migrants. The mayor says Del Rio has set aside some funding just in case with the hope that any money spent on this situation will be reimbursed. He had this to say about the end of Title 42. It would have been nice to extend it another two years, uh, but uh, we, I knew back when I was writing for all this that eventually it was going to fade off. Can we predict how many can come our way? No, but we can prepare. We can prepare for those four or 5,000, you know, it, or whatever comes our way. And tomorrow we'll be in Laredo. Local leaders there plan to speak on their preparations for the end of Title 42. The pandemic era rule is set to be lifted at 11.59 Thursday night. Tim. Two reports from the border. It was a wet, wet day here in San Antonio. Right now, those storms beginning to wind down outside. Adam, can we expect any more rain? Or are we going to get a chance to dry out? Well, you know, I think both, Tim, will have a chance to dry out and then some heavy rain back into the forecast. So if you missed out on this last batch that we had yesterday and even today, don't worry. I'm very confident you'll see more rain. Right now, the rain is transitioned east of San Antonio. It's scattered in nature, especially between I-10 and I-37. One line just popped up roughly from Floresville to Pleasanton headed toward Campbellton. And we also have these showers with a little bit of lightning and thunder right now moving through Quero. That's headed toward Hallettsville as well. So the one that actually contains the lightning and thunder, the actual thunderstorm, nothing severe, but that thunder and lightning should make it to Hallettsville by 11 p.m. Otherwise, this batch of heavy rain Currently in Wilson County, that'll make it to city of Gonzales by 1152 PM. That's the activity that we have nothing around San Antonio at the moment. This is all south and east of town, and this is where it's going to be staying for the rest of the night. We don't expect any more development over town. That's going to be changing in the days ahead. Some heavy rain in the forecast. We'll time that out for you. Also, take a look at the drought monitor and how much rain fell on those drought stricken parts of south and central Texas in just a bit. All right, Adam, we'll see you then. One person is dead tonight following a crash over on the city's northwest side. It happened at Grissom and Old Grissom Road near Culebra Road. That's where police say the driver of one vehicle crashed into another. Details are still pretty limited tonight, but officers say wet roads may have played a factor in that crash. At this hour, the future of Texas House Bill 2744 still in limbo. It would increase the age for buying certain semi-automatic rifles from 18 to 21. Yesterday, in a surprise move, that bill crossed a major hurdle after the House Community Safety Committee voted to move that bill forward. At this hour, we are waiting to see if the bill made it onto the House calendar for debate. That deadline was tonight at 10 o'clock. Today, a memorial was held for the eight victims killed at an outlet mall in Allen, Texas. Among those killed are three members of the Cho family, including a three year old, Daniela and Sofia Mendoza, both sisters in elementary school who family members describe as rays of sunshine. Meanwhile, their mother remains hospitalized in critical condition. Back here at home, a man is fighting for his life after police say he was shot by his teenage son. 
This was a scene just after five o'clock today at a home on Galt Lane over on the northeast side near Loop 410 and Broadway. Police say that man was shot several times, including twice in the chest. Officers tell us the son was later arrested at a nearby Home Depot in the parking lot. Right now, we're still working to learn what led up to that shooting. A Utah woman who wrote the children's book about dealing with grief after her husband died is now being charged with his murder. Yesterday, Corey Richens was arrested on murder and drug possession charges stemming from the March 2002 death of her husband. Prosecutors allege Richens spiked her husband's drink with five times the amount of a lethal dose of fentanyl and then called authorities, authorities hours later to report him unresponsive. The charges come months after Richens did a media tour to promote a self-published book to give her children to help children grieve. And fentanyl, unfortunately, is a problem here in San Antonio as well and across our nation. Our Fighting Fentanyl series is all about the devastating effects of the deadly drug and what's being done to end the opioid epidemic. Just scan that QR code on your screen. It'll take you straight to our fentanyl, uh, Fighting Fentanyl section of KSAT.com where we have a collection of stories that show how that drug is impacting our community. A woman accused of stealing a submachine gun from a Converse shooting range is now in jail. 25-year-old Amber Herring was arrested yesterday. Detectives tell us Herring actually used her dead sister's ID during the theft. She's now facing charges related to theft and possession of a stolen firearm. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says more arrests could come. The fact that we got one of the suspects in custody who, who was wanted for this, the fact is that we have not ruled out. In fact, it's highly likely that we're going to make further arrests in this case. The sheriff also says the search for the stolen machine gun is not over yet. This is a photo of that gun the sheriff's office is still looking for. It is described as an MP5, and according to American Special Ops, that gun is capable of firing 800 rounds per minute. If you have any information, call BCSO, their number 210-335-6000. An update now to a story we've been following closely. The Bear County Sheriff's Office is also now looking for suspects responsible for killing cows across the county because they believe those killings are related. At least three cows have been killed in separate parts of the county after they were shot last month. There have not been any more reports of any cow killings since then. Thursday, we'll see the end of the COVID public health emergency federal declaration. Here's what it means for all of us moving forward. COVID tests and vaccines will no longer be available for free to everyone once the supplies run out. Booster shots may cost some with insurance a copay. The night team's Patty Santos talks to medical health professionals who remind us the virus is still out there. In December 2020, Dr. Adelita Cantu made history, becoming the first person in Bear County to get the first COVID-19 vaccine. What a circus. I mean, cameras everywhere, um, trucks everywhere. It, it was a, it was a um, definitely experience that I'll, I'll remember for my life, lifetime. Cantu was part of a citywide coalition formed in the midst of a federal COVID-19 emergency declaration. Health Confianza. February of 2021 started the adventure of having mobile clinics and going out into the community. And uh, since then, we have been continuing to do that. Their mission was health literacy. Dr. Jason Rosenfeld says the pandemic revealed disparities in the health system, like the limited access minorities and the economically disadvantaged had to health care vaccines and tests and factual information. Part of it was helping people understand which information they could trust and which information they couldn't. The partnership of more than 30 community agencies under Health Confianza, they say, resulted in fewer COVID deaths and a boost in getting people vaccinated. Getting more information is our best way of being able to protect ourselves, feeling empowered to do that. While the federal COVID emergency declaration will end, the reality is their job isn't done because COVID is still here. It's just going to be in the community. It's going to uh, exist. Pat the partnership of Health Confianza was COVID-centered. Moving forward, they will continue to tell the public about available resources, but also shift the focus to other community health concerns like mental health access and ending diabetes.
We, of course, have more information about the end of the public health emergency on our website right now. Just look for this article over on KSAT.com. Now let's take a look at some of today's big headlines in your Nightbeat News Flash. More than 2,000 people have been evacuated from Sudan as fighting between two groups continues there. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken saying today that number includes about 1,300 U.S. citizens. The fighting between the Sudanese Armed Forces and the Paramilitary Rapid Support Forces began in response to an attempt to transition to democracy. Over the weekend, representatives from both sides meeting to negotiate, although right now it's unclear if any progress was made. According to the Saudi Foreign Ministry, both sides are hoping to arrange a ceasefire to allow humanitarian aid in. Former President Donald Trump has been found liable of battery and defamation against writer E. Jean Carroll. The jury siding with Carroll's legal team agreeing Trump committed sexual battery on Carroll in a New York City department store dressing room back in 1996. And then he defamed her when he denied the allegations. The former president, who did not attend the trial, does not face any prison time. He has been ordered to pay $5 million in damages. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Coming up, this peacock brought one San Antonio neighborhood together. What those neighbors have to say now that that bird has been relocated. Welcome back. A peacock beloved by a San Antonio neighborhood will soon have a new home. Animal Care Services removed the wild bird from Mankey Park after it pecked two young children. But as the night team's John Paul Barajas explains, neighbors want the peacock to stay. Beautiful, wild, and now gone. The Mankey Park neighborhood is rallying to keep a unique member of their community. A peacock they call Kevin or Mr. Blue. He's been something that's brought us together. And so now we're all torn apart. According to Animal Care Services, the bird pecked two young children visiting the botanical gardens last week. No skin was broken, but an ACS statement says in part, quote, People at that event, unfortunately, were bothering the bird, and he acted out while people were trying to take pictures and coming closer to him. The peacock was humanely trapped. I'm a mom, too, and I know how scary it can be when your kid gets hurt. I have my kids out uh, looking at him all the time, and he won't let them get close. When anybody gets too close, he'd run away. So this makes me think maybe he just didn't have anywhere to run to this time. The peacock made the Mankey Park area his home over the last few years. Neighbors say they've never seen him be aggressive often interacting with neighborhood pets and people. Every morning, I would look out the window and say, good morning, Mr. Blue, and he would wah, 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 wah. I'd throw blueberries out there, and he'd go eat them. And, uh, you know, everybody had a little attachment that they had with Kevin. ACS says the bird will not be euthanized. Instead, he'll be taken to a sanctuary. He became part of the neighborhood dynamic. And now that he's gone, there's a void something the Mankey Park neighborhood is reluctantly coming to terms with. I just hope he goes to a better place. And I hope he has other peacocks to hang out with. It just will miss him. John Paul Barajas, KSET 12 News. Turning our attention outside with live cam there at uh, 410 and I-10. Lots of clouds still out there, Adam. The rain's starting to wind down here in the San Antonio area, but still a lot of rain out there. Yeah, especially east of San Antonio. That's where we have the rain. We actually had a little bit of clearing, especially if you looked off to the west. And surprisingly to hear if you're around San Antonio today where we were only around 70 degrees this afternoon, Del Rio was sunny in 91 earlier today. So quite a contrast. You look at the radar right now. We talked about this earlier, mainly just some pockets of heavy rainfall starting to see a little bit of lightning flare up within this thunderstorm that's approaching Campbellton. And that's going to then head eastward already along 181 Floresville. But other cities, F Fall City, Carn City, Kennedy, you'll get another round from that batch within the next hour. Then we've got the heavier rain in DeWitt County that's headed toward Hallettsville and also Gonzales. You've got this batch of heavy rain. You got a little bit of a break right now in Gonzales, but this batch is headed your way. A little bit of lightning and thunder with that batch, and it'll make it to Gonzales by 1107 PM and smiley. It's just about to clip you. So that's what we have across our area right now. This is going to stay east of San Antonio the rest of the night and start to taper off toward dawn. Now, East of town, we don't even have a drought anymore. We've had enough rain that the drought has been wiped away for most locations east of San Antonio. And 
after what we've had recently, I bet a lot of this will be wiped away as well. But we're really focusing on this area in the hill country, Bandera, Hondo, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, Blanco. Obviously, it stretches just south of the hill country as well. But let's put the radar on this and you see some good rain over the past 24 hours here in this area. Some good rain in the most drought stricken parts of South and Central Texas, and that's what we like to see. And we're going to add to that in the days ahead. This is also good for the aquifer because the aquifer recharge zone within that extreme and exceptional drought area. Now in that area, Bandera 2.26 inches of rain. Congratulations. Good accumulation. Pipe Creek, very similar. Helotus 1.34, Bernie 1.44. Hondo 2.37, Sabinal 2.33. Very good and impressive rainfall accumulations within the most drought stricken part of our area. Now it's out all east of town, so good maintenance rain for locations east of San Antonio that currently are not in a drought. And as we go through the rest of the night, we talked about this, this scattered activity, staying east of town. Then as we get toward dawn tomorrow, most of it's going to come to an end, but we could still have a few straggler showers out there. I do think for the most part tomorrow morning, which our future cast indicates low clouds, little spritzers or sprinkle here and there, and even some fog to reduce the visibility. But by noon, breaking into sunshine, and then actually a fairly dry and sunny uh, afternoon and most of the day tomorrow. I think outdoor activities tomorrow afternoon and evening, baseball practice, soccer games, whatever, will be A-OK. -okay. We have that very off chance, 20%, because you can't rule out in this messy pattern, 20% chance of an afternoon pop-up storm next few days, mostly dry. Then we get to Friday, Friday into Saturday. Our pattern shifts even more favorable for not just rain, but heavy rain, flash flooding, the primary concern Friday and then throughout the day on Saturday. Widespread areas of rain, a little bit of lightning and thunder, but luckily we're not really expecting any severe weather with it. It's, it's a possibility, but it's not a probability. Flash flooding is our primary concern. Then we get into Mother's Day on Sunday, and it looks like most of the rain will start to taper off, but we could still have some scattered activity. We'll fine tune that forecast as it gets closer. Flash flooding risk Saturday, high throughout the San Antonio area and up into the hill country in some locations just off to the west. We could easily see another four to six inches on top of what we've already picked up with locally higher amounts. Drought denting, drought busting for some. It's good. This is what we needed. 68 in the morning, 85 tomorrow afternoon. That's in San Antonio. Comfort 85. We'll be 85 in Pleasanton, Bulverde and Bernie at 83. And then pretty much carbon copy on Thursday. It's Friday. And then throughout the day on Saturday, we're watching for that heavy rain. 70 the five the high on Saturday, so a bit cooler as a result of the rain. Let's hope we don't need a boat to get mom for Mother's Day. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. All right, Larry, uh, TCU's head coach came all the way down here to hang out at the San Antonio Quarterback Club. Yeah, Sonny Dykes uh, made the drive down this morning, said it was really nice, got to see the flowers in the field as he was driving, so a pretty cool drive. And also gave us a chance to talk to him about several things, including UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer and the XFL's leading tackler, also is a great artist. Coming up. You know, the game ball definitely goes in. We don't win without them. Talking of what looks like a silk pajama top, LeBron James praised Lonnie Walker IV in Big Board Sports. Ownership of the San Antonio Spurs continues to change. Aramark said it's reached a deal to sell half of its ownership stake in the team for $100 million, according to a report from Sportico. Aramark CEO John Zilmer reportedly said in a call with Wall Street analysts yesterday they sold approximately half their interests because there was a buyer who was working with the team to establish an ownership position, and they have no intention of keeping the other part of their ownership. In 2021, Sixth Street bought 20% of the Spurs and Michael Dale 10% at a reported $1.8 billion valuation. In the Eastern Conference semis tonight, the 76ers won at the Celtics, 115-103, taking a 3-2 series lead. To have my teammates be there with me through thick and thin, understanding, you know, what it is, and it's a great feeling, honestly. I'm really going to cherish this day and, um, and soak it all in. 
Lonnie Walker, the fourth, scored all 15 of his points in the fourth last night to help the Lakers beat the Warriors 104-101, taking a 3-1 series lead in the Western Conference semis. Let's go to UIW, where Shane Hireman was introduced as the new head men's basketball coach today. During his presser, he said he wants players with grit and nastiness. Coach is 34 years old, and one of the first things he did was hire former Spurs guard Jaron Jackson as one of his assistant coaches. So Hireman coached Jaron Jackson Jr. in high school, and Jackson Sr. was an assistant on that staff, and now they're reunited at Incarnate Word. As a, so many people that have come through the Spurs and it's impacting the world in, in basketball from a coaching perspective, and it's doing great things. And, uh, and to just to be a part of that myself, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing. So, and hopefully I can bring a little Spurs way here to Tim Corny Word and to Coach Shane, who who knows my my past and, and, and recognizes it. And he, he had a little taste of it with my son. Jackson won the NBA title with the Spurs in 1999 and scored 11 points in the title clinching fifth game against the Knicks. TCU head football coach Sonny Dykes drove from Fort Worth to San Antonio this morning to speak at the San Antonio Quarterback Club. He said it's great to be here and that he really enjoyed the drive. Now this gave us the chance to ask him about UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer, who's having incredible success with the Roadrunners. Jeff's done a tremendous job at UTSA. I mean, I got to know Jeff. Um, and, and know him well. Uh, you know, he was a really successful high school coach, won a lot of games. You know, when he became assistant at the University of Texas, he's one of those guys that you watched and you just knew he was going to be successful. And, you know, I'm not surprised with the success they've had. Uh, I think the city of San Antonio has done a tremendous job of, of jumping in and, and uh, investing in the program. And I hope they continue to do that because if they do, they're, they're going to win a lot of football games around here. And today is Coach Trailer's B-Day. UTSA football tweeted, happy birthday to our leader. We sure hope you're having a good one, Coach. UTSA senior Cameron Carrion didn't let a rainy day and a 53-minute weather delay TPC San Antonio Oaks course slow her down. Entering the second round of the NCAA San Antonio Regional at one under par, she fired a 5-under 67 to sit at 6-under par with a four-shot lead heading into the final round tomorrow. Cam will tee off from number one at 8.55 tomorrow morning. He's a Brahma's linebacker and an artist after the break. This is my second love right here, man. Uh, I've been running to this when I was about uh, graduating from college. You know, I, I got done and I had a little free time, so I got into art, man. I've been doodling my whole life. San Antonio Brahma's linebacker Jordan Williams is a talented artist, and he kicked off XFL Championship Week on Monday, painting a mural on the back wall of Maddie McMurphy's Irish Sports Bar. Right now, I'm going with Alamo Dome is the main theme. It's a sports bar, you know, so I wanted to kind of throw our Brahma theme in. And so Alamo Dome is going to be the main part. And then we'll have like some of the city in the background, some of the main uh, landmarks um, and stuff like that. And then I'm going to come on the left side and I got a, I got me a nice little, you know, Irishman right here in the front. And then also I'm going to throw some mascots in here, like the mariachi man, stuff like that, man. It's just going to all be like a big piece that you can come take a picture in front of. Arlington will play D.C. Saturday night at 7 for the XFL Championship at the Alamo Dome. The Hooks Missions ball game at the Wolf is postponed by rain. The two will play a doubleheader on Saturday. They're also scheduled for a double dip tomorrow starting at 5.05 p.m. And six years ago today, May 9, 2017, Western Conference semis, Manu Ginobili blocked James Harden's potential game-tying three in overtime. Spurs won game five, 110 to 107. They would eliminate the Rockets in six. Spurs, though, lost in the West Finals to the Warriors, but still, Manu with a shot that none of us will ever forget. And we remember what that was powered by. Grandpa juice. There you go. Grandpa <laughs> juice. That's right. Thanks, Larry. We'll be right back. Cloudy start to the day tomorrow. Even some fog possible. A few sprinkles or even showers in the afternoon, but generally dry with some sunshine. The next couple of days, it's Friday into Saturday. We're watching for heavy rain. Keep that KSAT app handy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.